Hey guys, welcome to D3 Media Monster Mania. Today we're going to be talking about the 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong remake. Now when I first heard that Peter Jackson was going to be remaking the original King Kong, I was stoked, especially because he did something really unique while making this movie. And that is that he made a web series that documented his making of the movie, and at first I was upset that they were remaking King Kong again, but when I saw that the love that Peter Jackson has for this movie, and how much it inspired him to get into movies, I was really excited because this movie is doesn't really feel like a remake, it feels more like a tribute to the 1933 King Kong movie. How does it hold up compared to the 76 remake and the 1933 movie? Well, let's find out. And as always, spoilers do lie ahead. Now, the plot of the movie, I'm not going to even bother really getting into it because it's pretty much the same plot as the original 1933 one, just with more characters and expanded upon a lot of things that were very expanded upon in the original 1933 movie. So let's just move on to some of the things that I didn't like about the movie. And that is that the movie drags a lot. And this is a common criticism with this movie is that we spend way too long on that goddamn boat. We get to know characters that we don't really care about. And there's just way too much stuff. Like, I love that this is the definition of a movie that was made by a fan. Like, you know, if you made your own fan film for Star Wars or something, you would expand upon every single little detail and everything. This is the equivalent of that. This is Peter Jackson making a fan film for King Kong. In many ways, that is one of the best parts of the movie, but in other ways, that is still one of the things that, yeah, it does get pretty boring after a while. And there's also some pretentious filmmaking type scenes in the movie that just come off as weird, like some of the scenes with the natives and everything. But let's go over the good things, and that is that this movie looks beautiful. They did such a faithful recreation of the movie, and Peter Jackson's really good at mixing like practical sets with, you know, CGI effects, and this is some of the best CGI I've ever seen. It is top notch. I mean, you look at some of these shots of Kong and the dinosaurs, they look real. They look like they'd be an animatronic, and that is something that really can't be said for a lot of CGI movies these days. The only other movie I could think about is maybe Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park when it comes to that kind of CGI, and the Lord of the Rings movies. I like that the actors that they got for everybody, they do a pretty good job in the movie, nobody gives a bad performance. Even Jack Black, who at sometimes feels a little out of place in this movie, does a really good job. I mean, he's no Robert Armstrong, but he's still enjoyable to watch. To anybody, I highly recommend if you could find this book, The Making of King Kong. It is such a fascinating read, and it really just shows the passion that went in behind this movie. And it's really, it's really refreshing. I got it with this edition of King Kong when the movie first came out, and I absolutely love it. I love this movie. I think it is a really good movie. Still, in comparison to the 1933 one, I still think the 1933 one is better, but... This is a great movie. I really highly recommend it to anybody who's a fan of King Kong or just giant monster movies in general. The effects are great. The creatures are great. The characters are all pretty good in the movie. You know, I enjoy it. I like that they take, like, some of the scenes from the original King Kong and actually use them when they're making the movie because they actually make a movie in this, you know, movie. And that was one thing about the 1933 one that I found kind of, like, you know, strange was that, uh, you know... They never really actually made a movie, it seems like. They didn't bring multiple actors and everything. Here, it seems like they're actually trying to make a movie. They even used some of the dialogue from the original 1933 movie, which I really liked. One thing I'll mention about Anne Darrow in this movie, she's played by Naomi Watts, and this was something that I wanted to mention in my Kong 76 review with Dwan, but I felt it'd be better if I touched upon it here. Actually, I just forgot, but oh well. And that is in the 76 remake, they did something that I actually kind of liked, and that she tries to befriend Kong instead of spending her whole time screaming. And don't get me wrong, I do still love Fei Ray. But there, it didn't really make any sense in the 76 movie because there wasn't much on the island that Kong was trying to protect her from. There wasn't any dinosaurs or other creatures. In this movie, though, they do kind of the same thing where Anne tries to befriend Kong, but here it makes sense because she realizes the only way she's going to survive this island is if Kong is there protecting her from all the dinosaurs and other things that try to eat her. And speaking of the dinosaurs, I already mentioned that I love the creatures in this movie. The T-Rex fight in this movie is awesome. Overall, guys, I highly recommend this movie. You know, it's a really good movie, great monster movie, and if you want to, like, you know, binge watch a bunch of King Kong movies on the lead up to Kong Skull Island, I highly recommend watching all three of the movies that I've reviewed. So now, be on the lookout for my Kong Skull Island review. It'll be up in the next couple days. So that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.